At this point, any praise that Drake receives sounds a little bit redundant. Oh, another record he broke? Big deal. We've heard that story before. He surpassed who? Cool. I mean, I thought he did that already. Drake sold how much? I'm not really shocked. His success is a commonality that we expect. Every time that Drake releases an album, everyone automatically figures it'll go number one anyway. And, well, it kinda does. Looking at his last two albums alone, In More Life and Scorpion, he statistically ran circles around not only every other rapper, but every artist, period, competing with legends of old rather than his current peers. When his playlist project More Life dropped in 2017, it broke the record for the most simultaneously charted Hot 100 titles with 24. It also helped Drake break his own record of most Hot 100 debuts in one week, and it broke the record for most streams in a single day in one streaming service. Can you even fathom those kinds of numbers for a rapper? No one's even coming close. Then, one year later, he tops all of them with his eighth consecutive studio album, Scorpion, which became the first album to rack in over 1 billion global streams in its first week, as well as breaking the Beatles' 54-year-old record of simultaneous top 10 songs with seven. But what if you took Drake out of the picture? What if you removed them completely? His success, his imprint, his songs, everything he's done since entering the game in 2006, just took it all away. What will we have? Maybe Drake's dominance is second nature to us because we see it all the time. But what if we took him out of the picture and just pondered what it would look like without him? Gain a new perspective and maybe an appreciation for the greatness we have in front of our eyes. Every superhero needs a villain, correct? And while Kendrick and Drake's tension has never escalated past subliminals, their perspective dominance provides much-needed barbershop debate among students of the game. For a time, it was an unspoken understanding that Drake was leading the pack. But that was only until Kendrick dropped control and Good Kid Mad City. Drake has been getting away with sales and glamour entertaining the masses, but Kendrick kind of shifted the conversation back to bars and content. If it was just Kendrick, there wouldn't be a debate. But while Kendrick was still considered Rapper of the Year by many, Drake provided a different look at what you see as the best rapper. If you remember Control was still around the time Drake dropped his Grammy award winning album Nothing Was The Same, and he was still scorching hot with the Versace verse with Amigos. It's kind of like Drake adds that balance. In January of this year, it was reported that the first time in history rap had surpassed rock to become the most popular genre. While to us, it may have seemed like rap was the most popular thing in the world already, but it actually wasn't, and the people that have never listened to it before were the ones starting to pay attention. If you've noticed, rap is in almost every commercial, advertising, and merchandise that you see, so apparently it seems like the companies are taking notice too. And the value in rap? It seems like everyone from sports teams to television programs are trying to cash in now. And we definitely have Drake to thank for that. People always blame Drake for merging styles or being a culture vulture in the music industry. But really, a lot of what he's doing is using his enormous fan base to usher others in. Think Migos, for example, 21 Savage, Skepta, or even JB Blockboy and Lil Baby. While I wouldn't give Drake full credit for rap becoming mainstream, his co-signing of authentic rap acts serves as a major factor. So without Drake, would rap be where it is today? Unlike others, we shouldn't be bold enough to say that Drake brought singing to rap. Honestly, we can look at the likes of Warren G, Nelly, 50 Cent, Ja Rule, and Max B as pioneers of singing and music that Drake is the predecessor of. However, like he said in the Wu-Tang Forever song, it ain't about who did it first, it's about who did it right. And as we can see, Drake is pretty much doing it the right way. While the others I mentioned would dabble in their croons and favor more on the melodic side than a full-on belt, Drake just goes for it. He has ballads, and Drake goes number one strictly off of singing songs as well as strictly off of rapping songs. If Drake wasn't in the game today, Trey songs wouldn't even have tried to rap, and Chris Brown wouldn't be trying it as well. He's encouraged the use of melody and rapping and shows how they're intertwined and how well they play up against 808s. So in turn, we have the Bryson Tillers, the Blacks, the Chances, the Sminos, and so much more. Drake is good, but more importantly, he's transcendent. Even if you're not a fan, you should be able to see his imprint on the industry and how, because of him, more lanes have opened up for everyone else. This has been a Hip Hop Madness original. Make sure you stay tuned and stay up to date on everything we got going on by subscribing and making sure you hit that notification bell. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Hip Hop Madness and join the movement.